tempo que va. Like to announce that we just returned from closed session and no action was taken. And with that, we'd like to have the official opening of the meeting by having our Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone please stand. My hand goes a heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, we do. That is so true. Um, with that, we'll continue on um, with our agenda. Um, minutes from the previous meeting, uh, do I have a motion to adopt those? I move to adopt the meeting minutes from the April 16th, 2024 meeting. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the uh, Minutes for the board meeting of April 16, 2024, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Uh, the minutes have been adopted. Uh, fours one, or four zero one, excuse me. Uh, audience to address the board of trustees. Do we have any comment cards? Thank you. All right, I'm just going to take them into the word in which they've been received. Just as a reminder, this is not something common that we have, and so there's a three minute uh, time limit. Uh, we'll begin by speaking uh, here in front of Annie or Dave. Good evening, everyone. As you, I could thank you. Um, as you know, my name is Annie Morgan. Um, I'd like to begin by saying thank you to the district for being such a safe, supportive, collaborative place to work since I began here 26 years ago. It, been, it has been such a true blessing to work here at Mesa. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the challenges that the Board of Trustees have in keeping our district financially sound year after year, making sure to keep a balanced budget with an eye on the future, as well as the present. Being a small district creates difficulties with financial planning that are quite different from running larger or even medium-sized districts. It makes sense to maintain a larger reserve fund percentage-wise than those districts. With that being said, 60% of any California elementary school district's budget is meant to be spent annually on staff salaries per the California Ed Code. If that percentage is not reached, then the district may apply for a waiver, which the county superintendent of schools will typically approve. This law was intended to protect teacher salaries. And while I believe most of my colleagues at Mesa would agree that it's understandable or acceptable to use this waiver occasionally when that percentage is not reached. It appears from our perspective that the repeated use of this waiver for almost a decade has actually become part of our district's regular financial plan. My colleagues here are going to share some information with you, which is simply meant to help inform you of how we teachers see this. It is not meant to create dissension, but simply to provide you with data for future decision-making. We are extremely grateful for the raises we have been able to have these past two years through our bargaining process. We also know that finances will likely be harder to come by in these next few years, based on predictions of what the state will be providing to public schools. According to the Center for Economic Research and Forecasting, a think tank associated with CLU, Ventura County is now the least affordable housing market in the United States. Every dollar counts these days, and I hope that you can keep in mind the unique economic situation of Ventura County 
and our teachers as you listen to this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're going to join me, Sheila? Oh. You're just half route. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Amy Catlett. Good evening. My name is Amy Catlett, and I also wish to start by thanking the Board of Trustees for the significant raises approved over the last two years. It is very much appreciated, and we recognize your efforts to make Mesa a competitive school for attracting high-quality teachers. Tonight, I would like to discuss the nature of the CEA waiver. As referenced on page one, California Ed Code requires that elementary school districts expend at least 60% of their current cost of education for classroom teacher salaries. It also allows schools to pay for uh, to apply for a waiver that would allow them to pay teachers less than the 60%. Please refer to page four to see the three ways that a district can obtain a waiver. Until recently, we teachers were not aware of this part of the Ed Code, and we're also unaware that our district has been submitting a waiver every year to be exempted from paying teachers the mandated percentage. On page six and seven, you can see the unaudited actuals from the 2021-2022 school year. This is how we teachers became aware of this waiver and how it was obtained. At that time, a Mesa teacher brought this to the attention of Mesa administration, but the waiver was still used. That is why we are here tonight. Our purpose in speaking to you is to present all of the information that we have learned so that you can be fully informed regarding the nature of the CEA waiver and its impact on teachers. My next colleague will speak to speak will discuss the nature of the third option listed on page four. The waiver application form on page nine suggests that Mesa teachers are paid more than teachers at comparable schools, and thus the district should not have to pay us more to meet the 60% minimum threshold. She will outline our reasons for questioning whether those schools are truly comparable to Mesa Union and whether or not it is fair to reduce the funds allocated to Mesa teacher salaries based solely on that comparison. As she discusses this, please remember that we are not in any way assuming any negative intent on your part. We simply feel that this is a situation in which more information will be helpful to you when making future approvals of budgetary decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Christy Fisher. Hello. Uh, good evening. My name is Christy Fisher. Please turn your attention to page 10. The language of the Ed Code statute says that the district may obtain a waiver if teacher salaries are in excess of the salaries of those paid by other districts of comparable type and functioning under comparable conditions. Our main concern with the waiver is that the schools chosen as comparable are not in fact comparable in our estimation. These schools are supposed to be similar in order to provide evidence that our salaries are higher than comparable schools and thus should not be required to meet the 60% minimum required by state law. Please turn your attention to pages 11 and 12. Not only are the chosen, one might even say cherry-picked, districts geographically dissimilar, they are also demographically dissimilar. While the total number of students in the districts are similar, the needs of our students and the demands placed on teachers to meet those needs are drastically different. Even more compelling to us, however, is the difference in median home price and median rent between Mesa Union and the other three supposedly comparable schools. With double the cost of owning or renting a home in our county, we find it difficult to justify basing a salary waiver on such comparisons. We hope you find your own eyebrows rising at the sight of those numbers. Now, I respectfully request that you turn to page 13. In the first two rows, highlighted in yellow, the district received a waiver due to financial hardship in 2009 and 2010, and 2010, 2011. We absolutely understand and respect the need of the school to apply for a waiver in a time like that. We remember the financial difficulties of those years. 
In the subsequent three years, no waiver was submitted. Then in the 2014-2015 year, a waiver was submitted again, this time using the comparable schools method. As you can see, every year since then, a similar waiver has been submitted. The original waiver amount was for $19,324. However, in the following years, that amount ballooned to over $300,000 on multiple occasions. Each of those red highlighted numbers is the amount of money that should have gone to teacher salaries in accordance with Ed Code 41372 if the waiver had not been submitted. If you add up all the waiver amounts across the almost decade that the waiver has been in use, you discover that a staggering $1,594,700 has not been paid to teachers. My next colleague will discuss how you can help. Thank you. Thank you. Julie, Julie Walmer will address this next. Hello, good evening. My name is Julie Wolmert. I have been teaching at Mesa since 1996. This is my 28th year teaching first grade in room nine. Never left that room. <laughs> I love this school. I love this place. I will end our presentation by asking you to look at page 18. Now that you have all the same information that we have, about the waiver and the way it has been submitted in the past, we respectfully ask that you reconsider any future use of a waiver that relies on using comparable schools. We understand that there is nothing stopping you from continuing to use the waiver year after year, unofficially memorializing it as a permanent part of the Mesa school budget but I deeply and humbly request that you follow the spirit of the law as laid out in Ed Code 41372, which was intended to protect teacher salaries. We implore you to strongly question any recommendations for using the waiver that come before you in the future and only use it in the case of true fiscal emergencies. As with any law, there is the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. In this case, the letter of the law has allowed minimal paperwork to be completed, submitted, and signed by the county superintendent each and every year since 2014, 2015. The letter of the law allowed the waiver to excuse the district from paying teachers the minimum 60%. The spirit of the law would suggest much different actions moving forward. I truly hope that this new information has been illuminating and that it will be useful to you in your future decision-making processes. I am beyond proud to stand before you today to say that I work with and among some of the best teachers in Ventura County, Mesa teachers, are indeed exceptional. We are genuinely grateful to you for your service and dedication to our school. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have a page 18. Yeah. I think that's what you were about referring to. Oops. That's okay. 16. 16. Okay. Sorry. Not a problem. Um, thank you for taking the time to come talk to us. Um, nope, we have one more speaker card. Yep. Is Kristen Crawl. Hi, thanks for letting me speak. I'm Kirsten Crawl. And not a teacher, however, I came here 50 years ago. And um, 
it is truly a special school. And because of the teachers that we had then, especially Wanda Zuke, I have had 37 exchange students come through my door because of her, her class back in fourth grade. Um, but I'm here to talk about keeping the school safe. And that is through epilepsy awareness. One out of 10 people will have a seizure. One out of 26 will be diagnosed with epilepsy. Epilepsy became head of household in my house when my daughter was nine and a half and had her first seizure at the top of the stairs, fell down the entire flight, face down unconscious when I got to her. From that point on, she was we were having the paramedics come four times a week. So huge passion now. She had an epic foul when she was in high school, unfortunately, real Issa, a couple where she got locked in a classroom. The teacher did not know she had had a seizure and she was postdictal and he walked out, let all the kids out, locked the door and left her there. Second time, somebody put her on a golf cart unsecured and drove her over the grass to an ambulance where the ambulance was supposed to go to the classroom to get her. So there is Epilepsy Foundation in San Diego, LA, and San Francisco. We have nothing here. My daughter and I are starting the Epilepsy Awareness Foundation, Troy County. And with that, it's for training, free training for schools. Anybody in the community that wants training, Epilepsy Foundation has given me their blessing to do it. So with that, our first event is going to be a 5K um, November 9th in Ventura. We're trying to get 2,000 participants, trying to make it as accessible for if you want to run it, roll it, stroll it, you have a wheelchair, whatever you want to do, I want you to participate. With that, I'm trying to get all the schools involved. Um, it's going to be quick. We're having an art competition for students. We would like to find someone to make our logo for the t-shirts and the marketing. It does have to be in by... June 1st, so I know it's quick, but if you have some of those kids that are real artsy, they, they can draw fast when they want to. Um, and then we are also going to allow school bands to play. So if any of you want your bands to play, we're gonna slide for some time. Really wanna make it a community experience for everybody. And like, you know, Real Mesa or Mesa Union has been part of the community for so long. The students that went here were so tight knit and are still 50 years later tight knit. It, it's truly a special place. So I wanna make sure that everybody, it, it is a small district, but I don't wanna leave you out. So I've left my information. I would love to reach out and anybody that wants to help be involved, please. I want, I, we need so much awareness. There's one school district that has lost four students in the past five years one district and that's just what I know about so thank you for your time I hope to see you on November 11th or November 9th okay thank you everyone um you know I haven't been at Mason 50 years so <laughs> Some of our teachers are not. Who is it? Who is the superintendent? That's in the eighth graders. Was it Convery? Probably Convery. Yeah. Uh, it must have been Tech Health or Convery. Because he was here for like 20 plus years. Yeah. So, anyway, it, it might be close. I'm anyway. lucky if I remember my teachers. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, moving on, we'd like to move to the superintendent's report and turn the time over to um, our superintendent, Dr. Ramirez. Okay, good evening, um, Board of Trustees. Pleasure to be here. Uh, welcome to that. And, um, Superintendent's report will be rather brief, but wanted to provide uh, start with start by providing some the last four years. There's been a lot of events, but sit by no means 
a comprehensive list. So we'll start, uh, well, let's start with you. Uh, just a review of uh, some events that have, that have gone on since the last day. Um, a brief discussion on learning engagement. Uh, we're in, we're still in the midst of our test testing, and uh, plans for summer learning. And then I want to spend a little time on this, so some, some uh, rather significant activities project uh, that I'll explain. So we'll start with just a few events, um, starting with open house. It's been a while, but um, you know, it was a really great turnout. Uh, always run, or we were able to run our scholastic book there. That was very successful. Um, and it's a little bit more free flowing than our back to school night, but certainly very great for the staff. It was very good uh, for opening their doors, showcasing the learning that goes on. Um, and also making it a point to just provide a welcoming environment uh, as 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 uh, families uh, in certain instances visit us for the first time. We did also invite families that were interested in or are interested in Mesa or some that will be um, joining us next year. And sometimes that involves the younger siblings or sometimes it's the entire family coming coming over to us um, for the for the following year. So just a, a great event uh, as always and we're going to continue to figure out how to make it uh, better uh, every year uh, next event just uh, battle of the books so uh, our elementary and middle school uh, both represented Mesa um, and you see the dates there Wednesday April 24th and Monday April 29th huge huge uh, gratitude to Mrs. Romero for her contributions and for leading these young folks um, and our middle school placed second, which was a pretty big deal. Very, very, very big deal. Very competitive. Okay, and we only got two wrong in getting second place. Yes. They were very, very competitive. We were about to get one wrong. But, you know, it's a team, and they discussed. They had 20 seconds to come up with the answer. And it was, I loved it. I loved seeing them uh, just collaborate within 20 seconds and figure out what's the title, what's the author, and it was so much fun, so much fun. And the reason that I, that I uh, the county has definitely stepped up over the last uh, several years to provide more opportunities for schools to come together, to be able to compete in, in academic or, or just in, in, um, in different fields of study, whether it's science fair, uh, mock trial, battle of the books, the list goes on and on. But uh, we've been very fortunate that um, that Mesa has done extremely well, and it's been in large part because of staff and also because of parent volunteers that have helped us out tremendously over the last uh, couple of years. But specifically, Battle of the Books, um, we, Mrs. Romero and I, started talking immediately afterward about how we might be able to just prepare for the upcoming release of, of new titles. So that that is very exciting all the way around. And it's also a very young group on both of, on both ends. Mm -hmm. A very young group of middle schoolers mm -hmm. and a very young group of elementary kids. Yeah. So we're hoping that that continues, continues to grow, mm -hmm. and continues to showcase the learning and the uh, talents that your students bring. And, and then hopefully maybe next year, perhaps have a district battle of the books competition. Perhaps, right? District. That hasn't been approved yet, Ms. Perhaps, Mr. perhaps. But I uh, get where you're going with it. Uh, perhaps. Let, let me move on. Let me move on. So um, uh, we also had our, our full steam ahead event, and that's always a nice, uh, a beautiful event, really. Um, it happens during the day, uh, but it's really intended to showcase our hands-on steam activities. Uh, big thanks to Mrs. Dryden. Big thanks to many of our volunteers, of course. But Mrs. Dryden is consistently working behind the scenes, doesn't? And Mr. Dryden as well. And they, uh, as a family, have supported us tremendously did so at this event as well as well it was a great turnout of parents and families who came out to see and really the biggest thing was students working for me at least students working cross age it was the middle school students taking our younger kids under their wing and helping them learn something new helping them demonstrate their thinking and so it's just giving us a little bit of a snapshot into what the integration of learning can look like 
and how to demonstrate it to an audience that uh, may not understand the concept behind something that just happens in front of their eyes. So uh, again, very thankful. It was a nice showcase um, already with Ms. Hocamp. We are discussing how this can look for next year, where we can just team up and maybe even a little bit more collaboratively with other ongoing activities. And um, and so more to come on that. Uh, moving on, uh, learning and engagement, just wanted to represent that we still continue to, to move ahead with our CASP testing. Uh, this week uh, kicked off our, our math. Uh, you see the schedule there. Um, again, big thanks to the staff, big thanks to Ms. Kuklinski, to Ms. Wagner, to Mrs. Lutz, uh, just to name a few uh, people who just are are, are really um, involved and, and stepping up in big ways for us. And of course, uh, you know, this is the culmination of not just a year, but multiple years of learning. And we are doing our best to put our best foot forward and uh, represent uh, where we are. And regardless of the results, we will gather, we re review, refresh, and um, and move forward. Uh, so more to come. The next by the next time that we meet, we may even start to see some of those results come through. And if so, I may have some preliminary results to offer. Uh, next, uh, summer learning. Uh, we were just talking about that uh, earlier today, but there's some really excellent opportunities. We'll be, um, our, our summer learning will be planned for July 1st through the 26th. Uh, cohorts are in development based on recommendations from teaching staff. And we continue our partnership with the LMNOP lab over at VCOE. Uh, that's really started last year and uh, we'll continue to uh, use their space and their staff to be able to put forward a number of different STEM-based programming, robotics, uh, 3D printing, just to name a few, um, coding. And so uh, we anticipate being there. We're planning to be there the week of July 15th and the week of July 22nd. Um, so we're still gathering all of our details and logistics, so more to come on that front as well. But we're very excited because that uh, marks uh, really the start of our, of our new school year. Uh, it's not so much the end of one, but the beginning of the other. Okay, so we're going to move into facilities, and there's a lot to discuss here, um, and you will see parts of these in other parts of the agenda, so I won't delve into all of them at this point. But um, our biggest one is our district well replacement project. Uh, you'll see it later in our agenda. Our district well uh, is, as the as the board is well is has been informed, uh, is past the ability to be refurbished or uh, rehabilitated. And um, we entered into bid negotiations, went through the process, uh, have continued to seek the guidance and take the guidance of Keir Grandwater, who is our geologist on, on this project. And um, we, uh, we identified ABC Leoven as our lowest bidder and have since, uh, since our last board meeting, have provided, provided both a notice of award and a notice of, to proceed. And you'll see those in our first action item later in this agenda. We will plan a construction schedule as early as this week uh, so that they we can stage and start to mobilize before the conclusion of the school year. Uh, the contract calls for uh, Saturday, June 14th as the first day of construction. Uh, but of course, we want to provide every opportunity to ensure that the project finishes prior to the first day of school, um, at least, at least the heaviest parts of the project. Um, so we will be working immediately after sc the school year. Uh, I won't get into this detail, but rather later, uh, you will see the award amount and there will be uh, approximately $100,000 as an allowance so that we can um, be able to work through any unanticipated uh, work that may come up. And please know that with those allowances, there's always a vetting process that comes from um, BSA and for myself. Are we required to accept the lowest bid? We are. we are. It's a capital project and we are bound to accept the lowest bid. Um, there is a vetting process post bid, post bid. So once the bids are accepted, the bids are revealed, there is a vetting process for 13 days uh, where all of the 
uh, insurance information, all of the background vetting is done to ensure that the contract is actionable on both parties. And uh, at that point, but we are bound to um, go with the lowest bidder. Even if another contractor has a better reputation of finishing early, for example, or on time? Lowest bidder in a capital project. Now, we did have a little bit more flexibility because of the emergency authorization, but not to supersede the lowest bid amount. But to satisfy what I believe is the question, uh, in this instance, the lowest bidder came very highly recommended from our geologist. I know I mentioned this in prior notes. Uh, they have, over the last several years, upgraded their equipment and have revamped their uh, approaches to drilling in order to expedite. And from everything that I've been informed, this appears to be a very straightforward project. So very optimistic. I'm very excited, actually. So uh, I think the bid amount, to be to be sure, came in at uh, far lower than what I projected it would be. And I think, and what some of the, um, what some of the information I'd gathered previously, dating back to summer of 2023. Uh, there's always a concern for a rising cost of materials and labor. Uh, and in this instance, uh, I think it's a very, very, very fair price. And if all goes well, the district will be well served for multiple decades. Uh, moving on, um, later in this presentation, in this agenda, you'll see a proposal for a facilities master plan. I'm calling it a facilities master plan. It's easier to say than the title, but it's basically a district district wide systems inventory and assessment of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection. So it is basically our operational uh, master plan, for lack of a better uh, way of putting it. Uh, this goes back to at least a year ago where we met uh, in our retreat, and very soon thereafter, there was a board uh, desire to ensure as we look at the second, well, the remaining bond funds, um, to ensure that we fully understood what the facility and the physical plant looked like um, behind walls, under underground, and so this will will encap uh, will encapsulate that. Um, and uh, we we received a, a very favorable request for proposal from PBS engineers. They're actually on the line and will be with us in the presentation very shortly. Uh, we interviewed them on Thursday, April eleventh, and uh, they'll be making here their presentation um, and hopefully uh, moving forward with our contract but I think this is a very important piece of work in order to set the foundation for what our facilities master plan uh, ought to look like and what our, what the priorities ought to be for measure O and also for deferred maintenance. So uh, I see this as a very favorable step that will, will allow us to take a holistic look at the facilities. And last item, at least on the facilities front, we continue to finalize the phone system um, VoIP phone system. To my knowledge, all of this, all of the systems have been. I'm sorry, all of the sets have been installed. Uh, where they and they, did you take it? Mm. You took it, Brian. So there is a set in this room. I guarantee it. I have seen it. Uh, but anyhow, uh, anyhow, uh, the sets are 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 great looking, um, and they're a major major upgrade. So not only will our, will our act communications be infinitely improved, but it's also safety. Our ability to communicate really has an underpinning of safety um, from safety protocols to just basic communication uh, between and amongst classrooms. So we're still working that through um, and we're still, we're now kind of on the latter stages so that we can do a full cut over uh, before the end of the year, ideally, or shortly thereafter. So very excited about that. It's a project that has been long in the works and um, uh, the VCOE staff has worked uh, very diligently trying to create minimal interruptions and, um, and much to our satisfaction. So soon, and I do mean very soon, Mrs. Botores' name, I mean, a voice will be the one that will be on the outgoing message. <laughs> so just so you know, this is what's going I to happen. <laughs> I always like to give her a hard time whenever possible. And lastly, attendance. Um, attendance, as you know, has been a goal of 95% throughout the year. I'm very happy to report that we met our goal uh, last last month. Um, a lot goes, goes into this by everybody. 
And a lot of work goes behind the scenes to try to address behavior. Um, I'm sorry, address in attendance, to reward attendance, to highlight attendance. And uh, we continue to look to improve, but uh, very, very satisfied, at least for now, that we are able to meet our goal of 95%. We've been flirting with it the last couple of months, but it's nice to break through uh, as we head into the, the latter part of the year. Upcoming events, by no means is this an exhaustive list. In fact, it's a very brief, a very brief abbreviated list. Uh, but you see our, our volunteer dinner is happening tomorrow. Uh, by last count, we have 117 confirmed individuals, which is fantastic. Uh, I invite you all. Some of you, I hope, have gotten an invitation just of your own means, but you are absolutely invited to attend. Um, and uh, it should be a, a phenomenal time. We have our spring music concerts uh, slated for May 30th and our eighth grade promotion June 14th at 4 o'clock. And with that, I conclude my superintendent's report. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramirez. Any comments or questions for Dr. Ramirez? Hearing none, uh, we'll move forward with uh, board members' reports and communications. Uh, any correspondence, uh, reports, communications, interests, or concerns? I have one that came from this tonight. If that is, we have this beautiful projector up here. We have a beautiful audience that we rarely, rarely have. And it would probably would have been nice for them to see the slides that you just got through discussing. And so if we could have a figure out a means to broadcast that report on that projector to that screen, it would probably be appreciated by our, our audience. And so we certainly have the technology. Uh, and that's my one item that I would like to, to bring forward is that we figure out how to broadcast or cast to it so that we can uh, satisfy those that come to visit. And I appreciate that. Okay. Anything else? Uh, moving on then, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do I have a, a motion for the consent agenda? I so move to for the consent. I'll second the motion. Any questions or concerns uh, that might be brought out and discussed for the consent agenda? Actually, now's the time. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion items for the consent agenda? Which bank is it? I want to say that uh, that we bank I know that the Ventura County Credit Union does not charge fees to minors, to minor accounts. Yeah, the challenge is that this is an institution. And so, yeah. I don't know. Too, too, much, too much to unpack on that one. So I will only say commitment to see if there's any way to minimize the, uh, the fees for those accounts. I, I, I won't make a promise. A lot of things here, but but I understand and respect. All right. Any other uh, consent agenda items that anyone would like to uh, discuss? I guess I just want to confirm that item E, the uh, consulting services, it's just a three year term. Is that what we had before? Sorry, the, the consulting contract with Infinity is is for a three-year term, correct? 
Yes, yes, it's the same terms, conditions, right. Anything else? Uh, hearing no further discussion on this, all those who would like to adopt the consent agenda, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries 401. Pardon me, is me Neil back with us now? Wait, Dr. Camby, I gotta see you. My, cam my camera's on. I've, I've been here since you opened up open session, so I've been I've been here all along. Is he promoted? He's a panelist. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me, Trustee Sullivan? I can't hear you. Oh, I, I I can hear you guys, and I've been here since open session. I'm not sure what the Microphone problem. No, we can hear you. Okay, there we you can are. hear you, Dr. Campbell. Okay, cool. So, how did you vote on that last one? I voted in favor of it. Motion carries five zero in favor. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, moving forward, um, informational discussion for the on the LCAP uh, supporting materials uh, so LCAP we're, presentation. We're, we're in. We're going to table that. Um, item 12, uh, discussion items. Consideration of approval of the Public Agency Retirement Services, PARS, uh, supplement, supplementary, supplementary uh, retirement plan. Do I have a motion? I so move. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Uh, well, it's on my recommendation, our recommendation that the board approve uh, Just to not lose focus, I think uh, having them uh, having, having them, them uh, take, take this the major team. life step is important. And uh, it's important to acknowledge. And um, I think it's uh, fair at this point um, to be to ask the board to uh, support the uh, the passage of this uh, program. Okay, thank you for that. And before we have a vote on this, I see the two of those people, those two people are here. And I was to personally express my gratitude for their years of service years of service for all the teachers that are here, but specifically these two individuals who will be retiring um, because they have impacted my family. And so for that, I'm grateful. I do have a son that I'm trying to, former student of yours to come in on Tuesday um, to say hello and goodbye. Um, so let's see. He's got to drive back. He's got a 12 hour drive ahead of that day. So, but anyway, we'll see if we can get him here. But thank you. Thank you so much, each and every one of you. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, adopting the PARS uh, supplementary retirement plan, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. That motion carries 5-0 in favor. Um, item B, consideration. Are you retiring too? 
I'm sorry. Well, I, I look at these faces. I mean, they have been such a part of my life. All of you. Such a part of my life. Don't go too far away. I know where your sister lives. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move forward. Um, we're going to... And item, uh, what is this, 12B, uh, consideration of ratification of the contractor well bid proposal for ABC Live and uh, Drilling Inc. Um, do I have a motion? I so move. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Uh, only uh, to very quickly review what's in your packet or what's in the uh, board agenda. Uh, you see there the agreement. Uh, the bid submission, documentation, and both the notice of intent to award, and then ultimately the intent of uh, notice to proceed, or the notice of intent to proceed, so that you can uh, just review or ask any questions as, as needed. My only question, I think we've already covered it, is about timing, because I the notice of intent to proceed it really starts now and so then it was you know what will they need to be doing or mobilizing on site prior to the 15th or is the 15th really when they're going to mobilize no the idea we like i said we have um, as early as this week we will we will at least gather the, the points and the plans um and uh the staging will most likely take place over in the farm area um at least that's what uh, we have plans to do so that area is being uh, kept clear and available. Um, and the idea is for them to start moving. Now, oftentimes what happens is equipment needs to be ordered, uh, materials and such need to be ordered. So that arrival may come in the subsequent weeks, but that's why those notifications are so important to issue prior to this board meeting. So I do want to clarify that we're, that I... I, I am requesting ratification of an existing right. agreement. So I would I would predict that as early as this week, we'll talk through the logistics by no later than next week, and then we will see uh, things start to play out in the subsequent two to three weeks. Any further questions? Pardon me? Nothing? Hearing none, all those in favor of ratifying the contractor well bid proposal from ABC Liven Drilling Inc. Uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries 5-0 in favor. Item C, consideration of approval of the proposal from PBS engineers for the pro professional services for development of district-wide systems inventory and assessment of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing and fire protection. Do I have a motion? You must say it all. I so move. I so move. I'll second it. Any discussion on this? Uh, you kind of touched upon that in your uh, uh, superintendent's report. Did you want to say anything further? Uh, yes, actually, we have the engineers on our on our call or on our Zoom call, and I want to uh, have them uh, speak through their presentation. Um, I thought it would be important, given the scope of the work, that you have that information and have an opportunity to hear directly from them about the deliverables, about what this project entails. It's an it's an incredible process that I think will yield uh, significant information and some very uh, important deliverables. So, um, right here, Nishi, are you are you are you able to uh, hear us? Yes, uh, uh, we are able to hear you guys. Okay. Can you hear us? Okay. Uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you. So um, thank you, uh, board members, and uh, thank you, district, for giving us opportunity to uh, walk you guys through the presentation. Uh, we were invited uh, just to uh, highlight uh, our our uh, uh, 
MEP utilities as well as the fire protection related services for, for the district. Uh, we had a good experience with the Torrance Unified School District as well as the Harupa Valley School District in Southern California. And uh, we've been uh, helping the school district LAUSD as well for, for uh, providing the reports for HVAC units as well as the fire protection and, and electrical utilities throughout the, throughout the uh, facility. And based on those uh, findings and uh, describing all the all the uh, 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 like uh, those drawbacks for from the systems, uh, we prepare the list of recommendations what needs to be fixed, and we also provide the cost estimates based on that. So that findings and report it helps in in future for for the for the for the district to go by and and look at all the inventories and. Um, uh, systems. So um, going through the slides, uh, this this first couple of pages, we are talking about our PBS engineers, where we have uh, 110 employees in a company where we've been uh, working on uh, varieties of projects, aviations, commercials, school districts, K K12, um, and the STEM buildings. We we have a, a deep deep experience on this on these uh, systems. So uh, moving on to the uh, next slides, um, we have a full service uh, engineering group. We have beam experts and we have, we are also certified for the commissioning as well. And we've been doing uh, business, business since last 20 years, more than 20 years. In fact, uh, if we consider the uh, past experience where we were working with the TMAD. So uh, moving on to the next, On this particular slide, uh, we have our uh, experience shown uh, with the MEP uh, plus design uh, new facilities as well as renovations. Uh, we also uh, uh, provide the services for providing the support during the construction. And we have uh, 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 like various uh, agencies we work with. So here in Los Angeles, we work with LADBS. We have our experience with the DSA approvals process so uh, lately, the DSA has their protocols with the uh, uh, a Dropbox and uh, a Bluebeam. Uh, we've been uh, we've been utilizing those those uh, softwares for getting the approvals. So we 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 are very very knowledgeable about uh, getting the things uh, approved from DSA as well as working with the architects. So um, we also uh, have experience on the sustainable design. So when we look at the look at the uh, Mesa Unified School District buildings, we also recommend based on the sustainability side where we provide recommendations uh, uh, about the improvements. Moving on to the next, uh, this is uh, overall um, experience about mechanical electrical plumbing, IT, low voltage, fire protection. So this, this slide is basically highlighting uh, what are the capabilities from our firm, uh, what, 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 is the, what are the expertise we can bring on the table when we will be, will be working for the Mass Unified School District. So uh, mechanical, we have HVAC, uh, electrical, we have power distribution uh, and uh, PV, PV solar, PV, EV chargers, all that. Uh, utilities we can we can do the assessment and we can analyze them um, same thing for plumbing uh, it low voltage so we have it's a group of people uh, have separate expertise so it's not like one person uh, mastered everything we have a group of people working behind us so that's what it's on this slide that's a pbs services overview and then moving on to um, this, uh, these are the uh, projects which we already worked and a couple of them are in process. So this is basically highlighting the ex uh, our experience uh, where we were involved with similar uh, similar services what uh, this proposal uh, will be looking for. So Harupa Valley Unified School District, uh, we, we prepared the reports, we worked with the contractors and we are helping them to upload all the forms through the CalShip, so the California, uh, programs we are bring, we are helping them to secure some grant over there. Um, the same thing for uh, Los Angeles Unified School District Business Magnet. Uh, there was a major innovation uh, HVAC assessment and replacement we did. So the same thing uh, HVAC assessment report is very very uh, uh, important in the beginning phase where we outline all the systems and we can we can. Uh, prepare the cost estimate so the district can estimate the budget for for uh, for the project when it goes to the construction 
Moving on to the next slide. Um, this is in continuation to our experience for, for the se uh, several uh, educational facilities. Uh, naming uh, VTR. Uh, okay, so moving on to the uh, next slide. So our project approach. Um, we this is this is the main main thing what I want to highlight to the board. Uh, we just not just kind of uh, when the project are located, we just jump on and we start uh, preparing the reports. It's not like that. Uh, it's it's a effort and it's a process. Um, the way we do is uh, our team work with the district uh, closely for get granting the access. We are very familiar with the with working with the teachers and principals. So we we engage ourselves with the team and we also engage ourselves with the stakeholders for for scheduling the detailed surveys. Um, we perform the detailed field survey three or four. Uh, team members from our, our our side, we go there. Uh, we also use the tools like field wire. We go in the in the field when um, when mostly we avoid uh, like when when the classes are in 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 uh, progress. So after hours or when when teachers are are on a break, we try to get into the classes. Otherwise, we go on roof and access all the other systems. Um, we detail, detailed all the all the information in the field, and then coming back to the to the uh, uh, office, we gathered all the information, itemized each and every individual uh, section: electrical, fire protection, plumbing. Based on that, we analyzed those uh, uh, pictures and put together all the core deficiencies and uh, what are the operational deficiencies. Those sometimes we don't have access, then we take contractors with us. Uh, they can open up the system. We looked at internal components as well. And then based on that, uh, we put together a consolidated package for each and every system with their deficiencies and recommended upgrades. When we, rec when we put together recommended updates, uh, we also look at the codes, uh, California latest code and uh, what are the classrooms requirements for the for the filtration? All those things we highlight them. Um, on the right side, uh, the bottom right part, uh, this is the PDF, but it's actually a video. Uh, we use uh, we use the Matterport uh, tool uh, that allows us to record uh, 3D videos of the, of the site, and that is we can we can project it through through the uh, web uh, web browser where we can measure, in fact, all those uh, utilities in real time. So uh, those are the tools we have. We have a uh, capability to uh, measure things in, 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 in the virtual environment after the site visits. So those we will be bringing on the table as well. Um, going to the next slide. So this is our project approach. Uh, as I mentioned in earlier previous slides, like we just don't uh, uh, jump on the project and just start. Uh, we 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 are we we always come prepared with the checklist. Uh, certain systems we always ask for uh, just a quick walk to the side. We understand like what are the systems, then based on that specific checklist we prepare. So those checklists will be part of the part of the reports as well um, when we when we prepare the reports. Um, moving on to the next. So this is the uh, summary of our uh, project approach, what I mentioned, um, like uh, Torrance Unified School District and Harupa uh, Valley School District has a similar uh, scope of work. So that's what we uh, we are showing on this slide. Um, basically, we, we follow the clear directions based on the scope of work. And, and we also help the facilities to prepare the scope of work as well. Moving on to the next. This is one of the example for the project specific um, building assessment uh, documentation and uh, report services. So the right side, if you see that it's it's using the field wire. Uh, field wire is basically uh, similar to the blue beam, but we can take the site plan and we can point it out where we are taking the pictures. So in, in when we come back to the office, when we are looking at the picture, the team will not be wondering like, oh, where this picture is taken because some of the classrooms look like similar. Um, so this, this uh, field wire tool is very useful for that purpose. Um, reviewing the as-built uh, available reports, uh, those are basically prerequisite before we go to the site. And based on that, we, we complete our survey uh, and then um, we prepare our recommendations. So this is a checklist and the, this is the site plan we are showing as an example. Um, next. So, uh, 
our this is this is uh, showing our uh, availability flexibility continuity and our capacity so uh, our company has uh, flexibility as we are uh, involved with certain different kind of projects uh, school projects aviation metro uh, rail projects so anytime if we need a more uh, more manpower for certain projects we we bring that uh, as well and then um, the creativity it's another a niche for us we use revit cad uh, and uh, we we prepare the 3d diagrams um, when when the, it comes to the design so our scope of work as of now uh, it's for the report and uh, prepare the recommendation but after that when it goes to the design we we uh, bring those expertise on the table And this is uh, similar to the uh, 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 field wire, what I mentioned. Uh, this is the Bluebeam uh, tool. Now, uh, Bluebeam is uh, very popular. Uh, DSA also used for their QAQC and uh, for their comments. Same way, we, ha we have an internal protocol. Uh, we follow those QAQC protocols within the company. And uh, we use the Bluebeam. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we track all the comments where it's been like who made the comments and when it's addressed. Uh, we also highlight that it's been addressed with a different color and then it's become a record of, of our, our uh, documentation. Moving on to the next. So I think this is the last slide. Uh, based on the uh, all the information what we have provided, uh, we we always believe in the teamwork so we 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 work with the different agencies we have we have a extensive knowledge of all the codes and we use the up code as well which is a very handy tool uh, we we verify all the codes and everything in the field as well if it's needed um, so yeah uh, we have a robust experience with the, with the school district working with on on working with school districts on several projects and uh, oxnard library oxnard uh, rio school project we were part of those uh, all those projects as well so we are very much familiar with uh, with the area as well and uh, by saying that uh, i would like to just uh, thank you everyone for giving this opportunity to walk walk through these slides and uh, um, being here thank you thank you so much nishit for being with us So uh, by saying that, I'll open up uh, if anyone has any questions. Uh, just before we get to questions, Nishid, I just wanted to, to just make a comment that mm -hmm. uh, some of the information that uh, was delivered, particularly the use of technology and even the way to store and, and access the information that's being recorded and documented in future years was what led us to, to really uh, rep make the recommendation to bring on PBS engineers uh, forward for this project. Uh, they, their experience um, was very robust and, and even localized as was mentioned. So with that said, uh, if the board has any questions, that would be uh, great. A question. When are you proposing to start and finish? What dates? So our team is available uh, to start anytime and that's what we discuss with the district uh, whatever the schedule will be proposed we will we will comply with that uh, by saying that at least one week advance notice will be helpful and then once we get there uh, based on the size of the project uh, most probably within a one one or two weeks we can we can uh, finish our site survey and then um, it can be uh, two weeks turn around for preparing the report so these are the timelines we are looking at it, but again, our we are very flexible. Our team will be available. So based on the district schedule, when the NTP comes in, we can we can get going. So this is something that could be done during the summer. Absolutely, yes, correct. Anything else? I don't know if it's a question, but it's more of a comment of what went into scoping the project. We did just go through a whole HVAC system um, refresh around most of the campus, and I see that's a lot of what your experience is. So I just want to make sure that that a part of your scope included just reviewing all of the engineering that has already occurred within the last few years, and then looking beyond to see what else the campus needs. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, we we 
are uh, we are okay with reviewing whatever the changes have been made and whatever the drawings are available. Uh, in fact, if there are no drawings available, our team will be going to the field and uh, looking at the systems. Uh, based on that, we can document uh, where is the system located and how old it is. So we also work with the with the certain vendors who have been providing the services to the to the facility, and we can reach out to them to get the information and current conditions from them as well. Is there any type of construction involved? So at this particular phase, based on the RFP, I do not see any construction involved. This is uh, strictly for PBS engineer scope of work site. It's strictly the site surveys and uh, gathering the information, validating if any as bills or any uh, information available, then it's validating in the field, whether it's accurate or uh, it's been changed over the time. So there is no construction involved. Yeah, I just wanted to make a point on that. Um, this is, as, as Nishit mentioned, exclusively for um, a site audit, right, if you will. And with the with the goal of discovering the present state and what goes into the existing systems, what repairs may need to be done, what upgrades may, may need to occur. Important to make that note because that's going to make a determination as to what the remaining bond funds will allow. And there will be decisions to be made for sure. But one of those also will entail, uh, and one of the things that Nishit mentioned, but I want to elaborate on, uh, their knowledge of industry is very important to note. And uh, why that's important is because cost projections uh, can be radically different uh, than cost realities. And uh, giving, having a semblance of an understanding, but a real solid one, is super important for us because otherwise we may stay or the board may start to make decisions based on incomplete information. So again, uh, it's just a kudos to the group and, uh, but there will be no construction involved in this phase of the project. Are you, is a proposal to inspect every building here on campus or just some? So I, I believe um, that question, I'll take it back to uh, uh, this, because yes. the school, as of it, now, the, for all the buildings on site, uh, that is one site, right? So we, we do understand that it's all the, all the buildings on site. Uh, if, if there is a remote uh, building, I'm not familiar with that part. No, no Nishid, it's, 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 you're accurate in that. It is a comprehensive site. They are aware that we are a one school district. In fact, we... That was part of the interview process when we <clears throat> met with uh, PBS engineers is to make them aware that um, we are differently situated than some of the other districts. So um, it will be every building and every structure and system on site. Right. So um, I just would like to mention that <clears throat> One of the advantages of having a plan done like this is because it's also going to give us recommended replacement dates so that the district will now be able to plan into the future rather than um, trying to do triage and put band-aids on existing issues. We'll be able to identify roof replacements. Um, we just went through an HVAC replacement, but that does have a limited lifespan. And so we just want to make sure that the district has a good plan moving forward um, because we do recognize that bond funds are limited and we want to make sure we maximize every dollar. Along those lines, we're going to include all systems like tonight we're going to, you know, we voted on uh, a new uh, well. And I'm assuming we'll submit those plans, even though the well may not be installed at the time they do that, but they'll have that as a part of their report, along with uh, these ductless systems that we're putting the split units and so on, that that all becomes a part of the report. That we're, the, what we're gonna get at the end is gonna be a snapshot of all the systems that we have in place, when they were put into place, uh, what their current condition is, and how to deal with these moving forward and perhaps new systems that we should be in, uh, including. Yeah, I'll give you a quick example. The well, while we've been focusing on just the structure itself, bear in mind that it is our fire suppression system. Right. 
it feeds our hydrants, it feeds our sprinkler system, and that is incredibly important for safety. So if not, if not the well, the systems that it feeds are going to be critical to be audited. And now we have over the last several years and before that, but I'll just speak to the last four, uh, we have put a lot of time and effort into um, maintaining and repairing uh, systems throughout. But in this instance, that's just one example of how systems are interconnected and relay back to not just operations for operations sake, but just safety as well. So uh, yes, they will be um, they will be auditing all of our existing plans. I'm sure asking for additional ones that maybe aren't uh, uh, readily available. Um, so this is just a, a big way to bring ourselves current and to have a full understanding um, of, of the things that right now are big question marks and that uh, we don't want to risk making decisions that then interfere with that in a year, five or 10. We wanna see those, those systems well on the horizon. Is this cost estimate a time and materials not to exceed or a fixed price? It is, so uh, the proposal is a fixed price, but there is an allowance that we're asking for, 20,000. And again, that will be um, part of our conversations with so uh, it is not a not to exceed, except for base the base proposal plus the twenty thousand would be the not to exceed. Anything beyond that would come by form by form of a uh, change order. And I mean, I guess that's one of the things we need to be sure to be diligent about because if we have all these plans and maps, which we should, because it's all recent construction, that's the more time that we can save them so that they can focus on things that have not been looked at in urban development. Yeah, so I think uh, phasing is important. So our, our recommendations will be also yeah. outline uh, what are the important parts, uh, what are immediately needs to be addressed and what can be, we can wait for a few months or a few, 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 uh, few days for certain things to be addressed, but immediately whatever the concerns we have, uh, those will be the part of report. Uh, we normally summarize in, in, in uh, different categories. So that will be also like, we'll, we'll provide the input on that uh, timeline. Uh, and the allowance part, it's we are mainly keeping it like if any system is broken when we are doing the survey and there is no way we can do assessment of that particular system because it's something is broken, then we have to bring the uh, license contractor on board for fixing that in order to assess it and uh, review the conditions. So th those are the things I just want to point it out. Thank you, Nishi. Mm -hmm. uh, one last item that I want to point out because our audience doesn't have the agenda and they've been not been able to see this. I apologize for that. But uh, for your benefit, uh, this is all being funded by Mesro Bond. Oh, she's got it online. Good for you. Anyway, um, and so it's not coming out of the general fund. It's coming out of the bond fund that can only be spent on uh, capital improvements here at the school as outlined by the bond. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the proposal by PBS engineers for professional services and development of the district systems district-wide systems, inventory and assessment, mechanical and electrical plumbing and fire protection, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 5-0 in favor of. Thank you, Nishi. Thank you. Uh, item D, consideration of approval of the Anderson's proposal for replacement of four ductless mini split air conditioning units. Do I have a motion? So move. Oh, Dr. Camby, didn't hear you. Oh, I just said I motion. Okay, Dr. Camby uh, had the motion and Ms. Hupp uh, seconded that. Any discussion? I mean, it's just, where's this specifically? There, there are 
Uh, one is in room two, and the other one, the other three exist on the end caps of each building, uh, building C, D, and E. And these are what maintain an, uh, an appropriate temperature for the existing network switches. Our servers have now gone remote, but our switches still uh, need um, the right temperature uh, to be able to avoid overheating. I agree. I just didn't understand in, to where all the buildings that we just put new HVAC systems, why these weren't, you know, potentially in those rooms. Because they require a different temperature range that's much lower uh, than what's existing. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the Anderson's proposal for the replacement of four ductless mini split air conditioning units, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. That motion carries 5 0 in favor. Item E consideration approval of the following 2023 2024 certificate and classified salary schedules for July 1, 2023. The certificated salary schedule, the certificated miscellaneous salary schedule, the certificate salary schedule other, and the classified salary schedule. Do I have a motion? So move, sir. I'll make a motion. I'm sorry. She did. I'll second that. Any discussion? There are the most. There are most. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll confer. Effective. Is that like one there effective January 1, 2024? Uh, no, the reason that it's written that way is because it was, it's aligned to, um, so I can clarify. So we had, a, uh, the agreements with, uh, Muta were two part. One went back to July one and one went back to January one. So it lies with yeah. the January one date. She just wants to make sure that every, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed appropriately, correct? That's the way you are. We're glad you're on the board. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the, let's see, where'd it go? The 2023-2024 certificated uh, salary schedule, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries 5 0 in favor. Item F. Uh, consideration of adoption of the March 2024 CSBA board policy revisions for the following section. Do I have a motion? As presented or amended. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion. Um, let's just take them there on the end of the list, like 3550. Let's see, 3551 option 
is recommended option two. Is that what you're talking about? So am I. So 3551, option two. Um, the next one that was an option is uh, AR0450, the Comprehensive Safety Plan. Again, it's recommended option two based on our district size. Okay. Option two is uh, what we're going to select. AR3516, uh, Disaster Preparedness Plan, establishes criteria for development of emergency. Uh, that's what that is. I, I'm looking for the option. I skipped over. Uh, 4118. Four, it's the AR4118. Uh, dismissal slash suspension slash disciplinary action is recommended option one based on the district size. Is that agreeable to everyone? Okay, so for 118, we're going to use option one. Uh, let's see, 514, BP 5141.21. Administering medication, monitoring health conditions, it's recommended that we use option number two. Yes, option two is adopted. Yeah. Um, what's exhibit one for 9323.2? It just says actions required by the board. Okay, that's the title of it. Never mind. Any further discussion on these items, board policies? Um, hearing none. All those in favor uh, in adopting the board policies as presented with the accompanying options that were selected, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. This motion carries 5-0 in favor. Item G, or before the horse here. Uh, consideration of the ratification of the steam field trip request to the Santa Barbara Moxie Museum. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Did they have a great break. time? <laughs> They had fun. Yeah. yeah, only only that it is just just our ongoing effort to uh, capitalize on what's proximal and some great attractions, great opportunities to extend learning experiences and experiences in general for kids uh, here at Mesa. Um, and then we have a big one. Um, Mrs. Dryden knows very well about this one, and that'll be JPL uh, coming up in in uh, a week. That's a week. Yeah, Tuesday a week. So anyhow, <clears throat> uh, just our effort to continue to uh, set some good experiences for kids and the Moxie happens to be a great one. That was great. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor of ratifying the steam field trip, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries 5-0 in favor. Uh, Consideration and approval of the ratification of the leave of absence request for employee number 304 under the FMLA, effective April 8, June, uh, April 8, 2024 through June 14, 2024. Do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the uh, extended leave of the leave of absence for employee 0304 under FMLA uh, say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed say nay. Motion carries 5 0 in favor. Item B consideration of approval of the rehire of Stacy Shim speech therapist. That motion. I so move. I'll second. Any discussion? Only an expression of my deepest excitement. Or grateful for that. Mrs. Shin back. Uh, just a quality, quality person. Phenomenal speech therapist. Knows more about her profession than any one person ought to know. But it is uh, it's great to have her here delivering services to students and collaborating with staff and families as well because she does quite a bit of that. So very excited to have her uh, continue with us. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the rehire of Stacy Shin, speech therapist, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Uh, consideration of the approval of the hiring of the following certificated employees for the 2024-2025 school year. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing any of these. Larissa Malone, Cynthia Martinez, and Jessica Barroso. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. A second. second. Any discussion? Uh, equally grateful and, and um, appreciative of, uh, of, the, of our three individuals named here uh, to continue with us. Um, and it just it's it's phenomenal to have that continuity and quality people uh, continuing with Mason. Any further discussion? We're grateful. For it. All those in favor of approving the hiring of the following certificate employees for the 2024-2025 school year: Larissa Malone, Cynthia Martinez, and Jessica Barroso. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. That motion carries 5-0 in favor. <laughs> Consideration of the ratification of the hiring of Guadalupe Yanosa, uh, the office assistant to effective uh, May 10th. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Dr. Cammy, second? Okay. Any discussion on this one? Uh, oh, just replacing uh, Solana. She started working right. Correct. Yeah, she's she's already begun work with us. Uh, has integrated really nicely thus far. We're working hard to um, bring her on board on things that that are ongoing. She's already uh, been very proactive and very good cultural fit. She's bilingual, biliterate. Uh, in fact, she also is uh, has a, a working knowledge of ASL. She's certificated in ASL. So again, just. Uh, uh, a great, a great uh, person to come on board and has already shown herself to be very productive and very proactive. We're working uh, on an ongoing basis with Ms. Uh, Ms. Leticia Cusino, who continues to provide us support through at least the end of the year. I'm very grateful for BSA for allowing us to, to have her continue. She will actually uh, be in on Wednesdays. She's in on Wednesdays. She'll be in tomorrow to help her uh, continue to onboard. Mm -hmm. But very grateful to Jelana, to Brianna, uh, who have been holding it down uh, in front office, district office since, uh, since Leticia's departure. And, um, you know, just a phenomenal team. And hopefully uh, we we expect great things from Guadalupe and bolstering that team. You know, I see a lot of material that is translated from English to Spanish. Who does that? Uh, it's a little bit of a few people uh, and some select services out there. So... I say that because uh, I think that was one of the reasons why hiring was going to be so helpful is to have uh, an individual within the main office to be able to to uh, be very fluent and conversant with uh, a different subset of our families. So um, increasingly, she will help support some of those interpretation translation, but she's not the only one. There are others that do that as well, including uh, Mrs. Orozco, Patricia Orozco, who is our uh, health tech and our parent liaison, who works diligently behind the scenes to do a lot of that work as well. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of ratifying the hiring of Guadalupe Hinosa, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed, need to say nay. That motion carries 5 0 in favor. Item E, consideration of the acceptance of the retirement of Carolyn Grogan, effective June 30th, 2024. I so Bail, Bail is due to the lack of motion. <laughs> it's been moved. Do is, that. There a second? Can tell. is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any discussion? I can't say anything more. We're going to miss you. Yeah. Um, all those in favor of accepting this uh, letter of retirement for Carolyn Grogan, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. This is the hard part of the job. Anyway, uh, the motion carries 5-0 in favor. With that, um, items for future consideration would be the LCAP. Uh, we'll have the public hearing and the budget uh, public hearing. And our next meeting will be June 10th. Um, on Monday. Special board meeting on June the 13th. Yeah, can I? Can so I, Monday, uh, June 10th. Yes, that's it. So, so I want to make sure that we, um, that if you happen to have any uh, conflicts that, we try to iron those out. I know that uh, Mrs. Romero will not be available on the 13th. And so I just want to make sure that we have quorum on that date, particularly. Uh, well, on both, really, but on that one, especially since it's a little bit more, even more off schedule than a Monday, just to put it that way. Okay. Okay. Dr. Camby? Yes, I will be here. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. With that, we adjourn the meeting at 8.30. Thank you, one and all.